How long should you be aging your mead before you drink it? This is a question that people ask all the time, and they've asked for years and years. If you go on the internet, especially old forums, you're gonna find people who say, you have to age it at least a year, if not more, before it will be good. And uh, I think this is a misconception that we need to talk about, and I'm gonna give you some uh, ideas on how long to age your mead, but I have a spoiler right here. There are a million variables that go into this, and we're gonna talk about the variables, but the short answer is, how long do you age your mead? As long as it takes. And sometimes that's shorter or longer. It's a variable. Uh, this topic kind of popped up in my world recently because I came under fire from a, a, a video or a channel um, talking about me drinking meads and talking about my meads that were less than three months old or less than six months old. And this channel kind of roasted me and, and said, the content I was producing, talking about that, was uh, not helpful or not true or anything like that. And while the, the channel and the video itself was insignificant, truly, um, it still is a good topic to talk about this issue. Okay, so let's, let's break it down. I'm gonna go shorthand and then we'll kind of dive deep into a, a bigger variable version. Essentially, I'll try to have some graphics too. Essentially, the, um, the way this works is the lower ABV mead you have, the less time it will need to age. So if you're making something that's like 2% ABV, you don't need to, to age that for very long. You can probably age that thing for two weeks or less and you're fine. As that scale goes up, as your alcohol increases, the need to age it for longer becomes necessary. And that's because alcohol content generally um, is perceived, obviously, in a brew. And the higher that ABV is, the more it's perceived. So time, generally speaking, helps to meld down those flavors and helps to, uh, I'm not gonna say any fancy break down the compounds or anything like that, but it just helps to round out the character and make it less apparent, less of a alcohol burn, as I'll call it. So you'll notice that a 5% mead, if you age it for, I don't know, uh, two months, like it'll probably be pretty good and just fine. If you drink that 18% brew at the two month mark, you might be saying to yourself, ooh, this is pretty dang hot. This has a lot of alcohol burn. If you're familiar with um, stuff like whiskey or spirits, you have to age those for a long time. And if you've had a cheap whiskey that has not been aged for a while, it'll have a lot of burn. That's kind of what I talk about, want to talk about there. So that's the shorthand. The lower the ABV, the less time, the higher the ABV, more time. Now that sliding scale in there is not like, well, if it's 14%, you need to age it for at least 12 months. Like there's not a math problem there necessarily. That's just like a vague thing. But there are multiple variables that go into considering how long to age your mead. So here are some of those variables. Um, and again, I'm sorry, I'm not giving a perfect answer. Some of you are gonna be are looking for that. Someone clicked on this video and was like, well, I have a 10% mead, I should wait X amount of time, right? I can't give you that answer because some of the variables are ingredients. Are you using stuff that is a very powerful flavor? Something like a pepper, something like a, a strong fruit. Stuff like that might take more time for the flavors there to really meld down into a uh, normal capacity that actually will be palatable and enjoyable. So that's something to consider there. Of course, your ABV, as we mentioned. The uh, fermentation itself, was it a healthy fermentation? Was it a fermentation that maybe didn't go as, was not as healthy? Uh, if so, that's okay. It just means that uh, you, if you have an unhealthy fermentation, you might have to wait a little longer for those fusels um, to age out. And fusels are stressed yeast, flavors, alcohols that are present. You will notice them, again, if you have a poor fermentation, you might notice them in a smell or a taste. Those take a lo little longer to age out. So that's something to consider. How healthy was the fermentation? A good healthy fermentation can um, lead you to less aging time. And I'll talk about the, my shortest aging consumption time with a mead in a second, and I'll talk about my longest, um, and I think that's important there. All right, wait, I'm gonna cut in for one second. I'm about to show you some bell curves. These are only examples of what you might see when it comes to a uh, aging mead. 
There is no perfect definition of when said mead will be its best, as I'm talking about in this video, but these are demonstrating that there is a peak at which the mead might be its best, and then it will probably come down eventually over time. So when you see a, one of these graphs and it says, you know, 14% mead and the bell curve peaks at 18 months, that's not exactly true of every situation. It's just an example. So please do not take these as, um, as a matter of fact, this is the only way it can be read. This is just an example to sort of prove my point and talk about this. Back to the video. So a lot of this is based off of, I'm gonna call a bell curve basically. The top of the bell curve is the optimal time to drink the mead. Now, that bell curve moves with that ABV itself. So at the beginning, let's say I, a, that 5% mead I talked about, that bell curve is gonna have a peak and that peak might be, again, theoretical time timeline, that peak might be at four months or five months and then you'll see it start coming down. That was the optimal time to drink it. The same thing happens with a 10%. You're gonna have a peak. Now that, that bell curve shifts over. The, the peak of that 10 percenter might be uh, 12, 14 months at the tasting point. And then it starts to come down where it's not as good. And there is a point, spoilers, where your mead is not as good anymore when you wait too long. And I know that seems weird, but it can happen. I've had it happen before. If you are not doing the proper um, storing methods or you're not getting the oxygen out that you need with your brew, stuff like that, you are going to run into issues where it might not last as long as you want. Again, using sulfites and sorbates and stuff like that will generally make things shelf stable so they will last longer. I've noticed that my stuff that's not been shelf stable has uh, decayed and not been as good quicker. So that's something I've noted. If you go back to the bell curve, let's say we have a 17% ABV brew. That bell curve is gonna be a little bit longer and bigger for sure. And that peak might be even longer. It might be 24 months before that thing is really at its prime, and then it comes down. But you'll notice, because it's a bell curve, you're going up. There's still points where it's good, it's good, and then it's best. Unfortunately, it's really hard to know with any brew, when is it its best? The only way to know that is to literally open it. So as you're looking at your variables, what's, in, what's the main ingredients, um, strong flavors, weak flavors, have you used oaks, have you back sweetened, have you basically done all of these things, have you used shelf stabilizing stuff? Those are, are things that you have to consider that will change the bell curve. And unfortunately, it has to come down at some point. And I know that's a big bummer. Everyone wants their mead just to get better and better and better. I myself have one of those. I have a mead that I'm aging for 25 years and I would love to look at a, a graph of that thing and just see it go straight up. Just, hey, it's growing and going and going. And 25 years from now, it's gonna be at its absolute best, but I don't know. I have a feeling it's not going to be. When creating that mead, I intentionally decided to do some things, make my variables more long-term, long-form. So stuff like more sweetness made it age, is going to make it age better. Oaking, um, it's a really strong fruit profile, so it's gonna take a little while to meld in that regard. And those are some things that I'm hoping will elongate the, the timeline for it and make the bell curve longer, hopefully. Will there be a day where it's at its peak and then it comes down? Probably. So the base math problem here started with, you know, ABV. What's the ABV? Lower, probably less time to age, higher, more time. The uh, um, earliest I've ever drank a mead, and it was good, and it's and really good, was, I say really good, because it really was, was uh, this one on screen. It's a Moscow Mule mead. And from the moment I pitched yeast to the moment it was in a keg and ready to be served was nine or 10 days, roughly. And there's a video on it, you can go and see that. And it was, it was good. I mean, I used a sp specific yeast, I had back sweetened, of course, I had done all of these things in preparation to drink this thing quickly, and it was still good, nine days. Now that's a pretty rare circumstance, you're not always gonna get that. You're not gonna get that as a young brewer, so just keep that in mind. Um, the longest I've waited to absolutely drink any bottles was probably, you know, 
15, 16, 17, 18 months of just setting. And it was with something recently. And I did notice a pretty good mellowing of flavor profiles. And I was pretty content with that. It's also a 15 or 16% brew. So it needed that time necessarily. It needed that to be able to get where it was, but it was higher ABV. Here's one. Here's what I want to caution you with. I, I am a loud voice on the mead brewing channel in the worlds, and um, I hope I'm using my power well. What I want to say is, if people are saying, no, you can't drink your brew before nine months or 10 months or whatever, that's pretty depressing. And that would be really hard for me to feel motivated to do something if I knew I had to wait 10 months, 11 months, 12 months before ever even trying it. Feel free to try your stuff early on and see how it's going. You might be surprised. I've had 14% brews, that have mellowed out and become really good in three months, in four months. And that was because I had a good uh, mean making process with fermentation and using nutrients and all of those things. Sweetness definitely helps to hide some of those uh, aging things that need more mellowing. People like sweetness, that's just how it works. So that helps, but you can have something churned out pretty quick. So please don't look at somebody and, and, and see, well, they said, I can't drink this for 10 months, so I'm gonna wait 10 months. You can, and I guarantee it will probably still be good, maybe. Don't be afraid to try earlier. I'm sure I've missed a couple variables. And so if you're watching this and you're like, well, you forgot to consider this thing or this thing, um, please comment below. Hey, what did I forget to talk about? But I wanna, I wanna demystify the aging process of mead. I hope that you are um, seeing that it is not a scary thing, and yes, you might have to wait depending on the variables you're dealing with, but more than likely, you can still enjoy that brew. It just might not be at the top of its bell curve. So, you're going to play a dangerous game if you wait for every mead to hit the top of its bell curve. You might never find it. And honestly, I don't know if I've ever really found that, and by the time I do, um, I, or I've, I, by the time I've found the top of it, I'm like on the tail end. Very few times have I tried something and it's been right at the top. So I hope this has demystified the problem for you. Go and make some mead, um, make some low ABV stuff, make some high ABV stuff. The challenge is just to make more. If you wanna fix your problems and um, be able to drink your mead, go ahead and start making more, multiple batches, and you'll find that you'll never really run out of stuff to taste, even if you're waiting and aging things. So thanks for watching, feel free to hit subscribe, and I will see you in the future. Cheers.